you get Dumb and Dumber. Yeah, my first movie. You audition for it. Uh, yes. Right. So that it can't be scripted the way you did it because that's uh, <laughs> Harlan Williams' classic physical comedy goofy gag. Yeah. So you you're a butterfly. What's the audition? And do you you don't know? I mean, it was gonna once once uh, Jim Carrey was attached. Even, I mean, it, it was a big movie. You knew it was a big movie, right? Because even at that point, it was this was post Ace Ventura. Yeah, I didn't know. I actually didn't. I read the script. I didn't even think it was that funny. The script or the scene? The script. But I didn't audition for the cop scene. I auditioned for the co-starring lead with Jim. Yeah. So I've heard of multiple stories before Jeff Daniels was attached. Did but and the, somebody else was attached, not just auditioned, but was attached and then was replaced by Jeff Daniels later on once Jim Carrey came on. No. When did you audition? Was Jim already on? Jim must have not been on yet. No, it was Jim's movie. And then they had me come in and audition. And then and then they I heard it was Jim's movie from the beginning. Yeah, it was Jim. Yeah. And then there was a moment when Jim stepped away from it because they wouldn't pay him. This is the story that I heard then. Jim yeah. wasn't attached for a second. Jim was Jim was attached. Then they only wanted to pay him three hundred. No, they they wanted to pay him three hundred and fifty grand, I think, or a hundred grand, or something something ridiculous. And then uh, and they then Jim's manager, because we had the same manager, said we want three hundred and fifty grand. And they said no, so Jim right. exited. And then uh, Jim came out in Ace Ventura, and it went, it exploded. Right. And then they went back and said, "We want five million for Dumb and Dumber." Right. So they could add Jim for three fifty, and they ended up paying five. Right. So when I was auditioning with Jim, it was in the three fifty world. So. Before he even left. Yeah. So Peter and Bobby were considering me for the co-lead at wow. that point. And and so I auditioned with Jim personally a few times. And I know Jim was a fan of mine too. But then when Ace Ventura was a hit, suddenly they went, hold the phone. This isn't the guy from Living Color anymore. This is, we got a star sorry. on our hands. So then they went out to the whole town. And they had every funny guy they could. And at the end, it came back to me and Jeff. We were the last two guys. I remember sitting in the waiting room with me and Jeff were the only guys there. Wow. And I'm looking over at Jeff. He's looking at me. And I'm thinking, I've never acted. I've never been in anything. And here's a guy that's been nominated for Oscars. And I thought, he's probably going to get it. And he did. And I thought, well, that's that's life. And then the Farrelly's phoned me and said, we want you to do this cop part. Yeah. And I said, you guys don't owe me anything. And they said, we love you. Would you do it? And I said, are you kidding? Of course I would. So then when we got on set, they, they had me do it. And then I finished doing it. And then Peter said to me, he says, Harlan, now do it the Harland way. And I go, what do you mean? He said, just do it the Harlan yeah. way. And I took that as just do whatever I want, the butterfly. And so we, I got to do that about five times. So half the lines in that movie for my scene are just ones I made up in the moment that they left in, which is wonderful for me. So, yeah. Wow. What a story. Yeah. Well, the, the original time I went in, I'd never been in for a movie. How'd you get the audition? I had agents. They saw me doing the stand-up right. circuit, so I had agents. As at Abram Artist, they said, "Go down. They want to see you." They just said, "Oh, they want to see me." So I took that as they just want to see me. And, as opposed to what? What do you mean? Well, I didn't know about readings and and oh, script you just reading. thought they just want to take a look at me. They and just want to talk. Yeah. So I had I had had the script and I'd read the lines, but I I didn't know that I was going to audition. So I remember I walked up. I went in. Peter and Bobby Farrelly are there and and they're looking at us like, hey, and they're like, hey, and there's this awkward silence. And Peter goes, Did you bring the script? And I go, What script? And Peter just goes, This is our guy. <laughs> this is because I was really like just an idiot, right? 
<laughs> and then and then I said, oh, you want to meet her? And they said, yeah. I said, well, if you can find me one, I did m- memorize the lines, but they didn't tell me I had to read. So then I read with them, and then I was in the running. I Do you was, remember what this, what the one of the scenes was that you auditioned? I think one of them was when me and um, Lloyd were in the bath in the hot tub together, and there was a line about sending a a dear John letter to a girl, but yeah. she was a farmer, so it was a John Deere letter. Uh-huh. And to be honest, when I read the script, I, I didn't really think it was that funny. But then when I saw it, Jim Carrey just. He just made that movie what it was, and yeah. he, you know you couldn't do it without him. So it, but so it was, it was magical and it was amazing to do. So, and you feel positive of the experience, oh, not yeah. not that oh I was so close. Well, you know, it, you can't help but go what if, and oh I right. was so close, but but I also go this is our journey, and we can't we we. I'm just I I look at I always look at life be happy with what you got not what you don't got. Love the one you're with. No thanks, I'm straight. But you know that song? It's it's, it's a similar. Oh, oh. Uh that, I don't remember where it goes, but love the one you're yeah, with. It's like it's okay. it's about being grateful for what you have okay. instead of looking for I thought you were going somewhere else, but but I was just overjoyed to to do the they they offered this role to me and they didn't have to and and so that just kind of open the doors for me is that the is that the big moment not not half baked but dumb and dumber no believe it or not it was my second movie called down periscope right which is a submarine movie i did with kelsey Grammer, and that one just blew the doors off that's before half baked yeah that was before half baked yeah and that one i i did a scene where i'm a sonar guy and i did this whole scene in the submarine where i'm imitating whale noises and very physical and Man, after I didn't think that movie would do anything, and and after that, it's like every studio in town was like chasing me. It was crazy. And what does that look like? What does that mean? Sending you scripts? No, like having me in like New Line and Disney and all all the big just bringing me in and saying, "We want to do a movie with you. What do you want to do?" And you're still doing stand up during this, right? Yeah, yeah. So I was just like the guy on the hot list. Like it was crazy. Yeah. It was it was wonderful. When you did Half Baked, you and Chappelle knew each other because you were peers on the stand-up circuit. Yeah. Jim, you auditioned with him before before Ace Ventura came out. Uh, he's a stand-up comedian in Los Angeles. Did you do shows with him? Did you guys know each other? Yeah, I did some shows with Jim at the Laugh Factor as well. Did you think of him as a, as a peer at the time, the way you and Chappelle probably were? No. Oh he my was God. because he, In Living Color was already out. Well, you got to remember, I started in Toronto as a stand-up at the same club Jim started at. You moved to Toronto out I thought you were from Ohio. Was that not real? That wasn't real. Right, because that's just where he's from. Because I am where from, Jeffrey's from. Gotcha. So you were you're from Canada. I didn't even I yeah. you know, didn't do my research of you I'm know glad. where you're from. I didn't want you to know. Um and uh so you start where he is and so he was already a hometown guy. He was a hometown hero. Right. He had already left. By the yeah. time I started he had already killed in Canada and moved to LA. So by the time I got to Jim, I was just kind of, I was sort of always in awe of the guy and I, I could never really relax around him, even though we ended up doing a lot together. He had me open for him and cool. we sat on a bed together once and watched The Unforgiven in a hotel room and yeah. And was there always something where like, there's Jim Carrey oh, or yeah. does it calm? No, I, he's, the, he's one of the few guys where I was always just really aware that it was Jim Carrey. I couldn't get I couldn't get comfortable with them because of that, probably to a fault, because I think Jim wanted to be closer friends. He would call me and say, hey, come and hang out on the set of In Living Color, and he was pushing for me for Dumb and Dumber. Right. And, all, and and I was so a little bit nervous and in awe of the guy, because, again, this was all new to me. I'd never yeah. acted. I'd never been around movie stars. I just came from Canada, and suddenly... Jim Carrey and right. real studio movies. And so, so I was wh- freaked. What was your behavior? Did you not go or were you going and just being too heavy handed? I Sometimes I wouldn't go. He, he didn't, he'd call me up and say, come on down to the set of Living Color and hang out. And and you wanted to, but you were embarrassed? I wanted to, but I was scared. And and he'd go, I'm going to a, a party tonight at Nicolas Cage's house. Come with me. And I'd, I'd, I'd be like. And what are you scared of? What happens? What's what's worst case scenario? I think I just didn't know how to act. I just didn't know how to be in right. the presence of him and them. And 
you know, I wasn't an idiot savant or anything, but I was just kind of like I didn't feel, I didn't know what to think. It was really overwhelming. So I, I think I just pulled back from it. And, and sometimes I wonder about that if I had been, you know. You mean like in a way of like just transparently, like being more able to rub elbows and be like. Just be part ch- of- buddies and chums. And like nowadays I can do that. Like going back to the the thing with the mole guy one night he called me up to just go hang out at carrie elway's house the guy who was in the princess bride the young good looking right. and i did it i went As up there wish. and yeah and i went up there and we hung out and i was just nervous the whole time and then we he called a limo and we went to a movie theater in westwood and watched a movie and he had a beautiful girl walk with them and i was just i was just like now i can hang with anyone but back then you gotta remember kid from the suburbs of toronto suddenly hanging with someone at that level it just it kind of frazzled my mind that type of nerves could you associate that with any type of nerves as a kid that like were a similar type of thing no nothing, nothing you never had those nerves before nothing really phases me but but jim was such a he was just such a guy that I admired and respected and just loved. And so it just, I didn't know how to sit still around him, you know, in my head. Yeah. I was always a little yeah. like, even though he was really calm and cool with me, I just, I never let him know that. But this is the first time I've ever said it really. But, uh, well, if, if he sees this and he reaches out to you, what a beautiful moment. That would be, but, uh, you know, I don't know, but. Do you remember what it was like on set when you were doing that thing? Did you make any of them laugh? Oh yeah. Dur- did they, br- they break during the I scene? Bro- I broke Jim and and Jeff up many times. And that's on their coverage, your coverage. Uh, I think they had cameras rolling on both of us. Yeah, that, it was it was yeah, it was shooting in at them where they're like, "Excuse me, officer," and, and "Tic Tac, sir," and all that. Yeah. And because I didn't know it was coming, and they didn't know it was coming, I think Jim was obviously a fan of me already because he kind of yeah. pointed everyone in my direction. And so, yeah, to, to stand there and watch me crack that, those two up inside, I was like, wow, this is, you know, I was kind of beside myself. That's the thing about laughs that I was saying where <laughs> when it's real and you get them, yeah, there's a po- it's a feeling. And to get somebody like Jim Carrey, who obviously you see as, I see in the world sees, yeah. but like, that's a guy you want to make laugh. Yeah, it was, it was beautiful. It made me feel, and it made me, it empowered me to just push further. And right. I was like, let's see if I can get them again. And I, I did, you know, I found ways to get them. And, Is there a confidence that comes with that? Like <laughs> beforehand, I want to do a good job and then you make them laugh. And now it's, is there, does that s- statement make sense? Like, I don't know what people are going to think of me or how I'm going to do or if I'm going to be proud of myself. But the moment you get somebody that you admire to laugh, are you able to like, I got this? Does that happen for you? You know, in that instance, it my my focus wasn't them. My If you watch that role, regardless of me being silly, I'm very intense. Mm-hmm. Yes. And all I did the whole, from the day I got on set, I went, I am a state trooper. I am this character. I am this cop. And anything I say, even if it's silly or even if I do the noise, it's all through the filter of this this guy and his job. And it, like I just became that cop and I had a history in my head and like I committed to that cop. So I wasn't worried about making them laugh. I just I just thought, well, if this cop went off, how's he gonna go out? What's gonna come to him? Yeah. yeah, it's maybe semantics, but I don't mean it even as a worry as much as once they laugh, is there does it add on to your confidence? Yeah, oh, but definitely. Yeah, but you can't help it because it's like I just made one of the funniest guys on planet Earth laugh. Yeah. That's what you think. And then you also go, you know, it was so weird having Jeff Daniels there because he was a bona fide dramatic actor that had been nominated for Oscars and he was known for his drama acting Mm -hmm. not as comedy and so to make him laugh was like another big triumph in my head so it was it was pretty uh pretty overwhelming and spectacular but the minute they said let's do it again i pushed that all away and i just became that cop again it was very focused committed to it oh 